Watching today's winners and losers on Wall Street with our financial expert Rob Black, and we're still talking about the Apple battle yes. and whether or not Apple should unlock the phone of uh, homegrown terrorists for the federal government. And uh, a lot of people siding on both sides of this argument. And you and I have stand on different sides. Yes, we do. We talked right before the break, and I won't tell anyone what the results <laughs> were. Um, but it's interesting because about 47 percent of Americans say they fear the government won't go far enough. 44 percent fear that the government will go too far and invade our privacies. What's interesting? It's all. All Republicans go one way, Democrats go the other way. So Republicans, 57% were more concerned that the government wouldn't go far enough to protect national security, compared with 37% who say the government might overreach privacy issues. Democrats were flipped, but about the same exact numbers. Uh, of no independence, were two to one in favor of Apple. I am in favor of encryption. I think our economy is really based now on um, data being transferred left and right through the internet. And I think uh, this is this is going to be a pretty big battle. So, an interesting battleground, nonetheless. And now, when you mess with, it's never good to mess with the government, the no. federal government. So, does this hurt Apple? You think? I mean, there could there be some real repercussions for Apple with this? You know, again, ramifications. Yeah. Let's think about this. Like, let's say they give the U.S. government the passcode. But what if China wants a passcode and China says, you know, we're going to go after people who aren't loyal to our, our party and we're going to run them over with tanks or we're going to put them in prison for life? I have some really big issues here. Okay. So we'll see how it plays out. All right, you know, a lot of people talking about the next bubble. Yes. And I hear a lot of people say it's student loan debt. Yeah, it's getting worse. Yeah. So, you know, we went through that recession 10 years ago, roughly, uh, when the economy really started to go bad. Then we've had seven up years in the market. Essentially, student loan debt is piling up aggressively since then, whereas consumer debt, not so much. Auto debt, we're still at the same levels we were back at 2003. But for students, um, the average debt in 2003, it's up about 58% since then. Uh, the average borrower is about 25000 Dollars coming out of college. That's a lot of money that sticks with you. It doesn't ever get wiped away. It, it slows you down from starting a, a life with maybe a marriage or a house or a car. You live at home. You're not doing economic activity stuff like traveling. So the serious delinquency is about 11%. These are student loans that are 90 days or longer in debt. Um, they're at they're 11%. These are crazy numbers, and that's double what they were back in 2003. So uh, the student debt problem not going away. And, uh, you know, it, it's a debt that we continue to build even in a bad economy because, hey, we want to send our kids to college. Right. And is this the kind of thing that can hurt banks and then hurt us, the whole economy, you think? I mean, is this that large of a problem? I think it hurts the economy much more okay. so than banks. Okay. All right. And uh, Disney talking about ESPN. Now, a lot of people complain that they have to pay for every channel. They just want to pick and choose which channels they want and keep their cable or their satellite. And ESPN and Disney may be on board with that? Yeah, they're, they're, they have to at some point in okay. time. So things are going a la carte. Think about Netflix. Think about HBO Go. These are standalone services that you don't have to have a cable connection into your TV to have. Disney's Robert Iger, uh, Bob Iger, uh, great CEO. The stock's done great under his tenure. He says, we need to make our platform a little bit better. And, you know, it's not a digital rights issue. We want to get the price right. But they lost 7 million subscribers in the last two years. And that's about $1.3 in subscriber revenue. Just to give you an idea. I watch ESPN, but let's say Daria doesn't. Why is she paying six bucks a month on her cable bill to not watch ESPN? <laughs> to, to do the world according to Gary. <laughs> That's the, so. So she watches games that Gary doesn't. <laughs> <Yes, yes. laughs> um, but again, I think this is great, and I think this is coming. Um, I think ESPN has to do this down the road. Um, you know, live sports, more of them are going to be yeah. going towards a la carte. We'll be paying the Giants directly. The Giants will make more money. We'll be paying the 49ers directly. They'll be paying, hmm. making more money. And our cable bill, instead of being 160 bucks for 1,000 channels we don't watch, maybe it'll be 60 to $70 for the Internet, and maybe 10 to $20 for channels we do watch. Okay. And then we do everything a la carte. That's good. What you want. All right, here's a great question from Roberta. I think we all have this question. How much money will Social Security give me in retirement? I think of myself as the most important person on television um, <laughs> because I actually worry about this issue more than anyone else. The average man's going to get about $1,488 in Social Security benefits per month. That comes out to about $18,000 a year. The average woman, about $1,167 a month. Um, plus, the average American has about $77,000 saved. That gives you about $3,100 in monthly expenses um, or in yearly expenses. Per, let me correct that. So, you add all this up, and that's about $21,000. Social Security plus your savings, $21,000 a year. That's before taxes. 10% goes away from state income tax. 10% goes away from sales tax in California. So you're at $17,000, and you haven't even paid Medicare, Medicaid, Medi-Cal at this point in time. 
that's not a lot of money. We need to up our savings to supplement Social Security. You can go to ssa.gov to figure out how much you're going to be getting. Delay it till 70 if you can, because you get more money the longer you delay your Social Security. Okay, so the answer is we're never going to retire. At least I'm not. Thank you, Rob. Yes. Uh, thanks for the question, Roberta. And if you have a question for Rob, post it on his Facebook page and we'll answer it on the air on Crom 4. We'll be right back.